Good evening and welcome to the TV6 Weekend News. I'm Dominic Calipizan. In the headlines, government brings forward the reopening of phase two of the economy. Maxi taxi operators to receive a $2,000 fuel supply grant. And in sport, FIFA's normalization committee comes to the aid of stranded footballers in Ecuador. Come next week, Thursday, more and more businesses are expected to reopen. This as the Prime Minister announces that an early introduction of Phase 2 is set to take place. He also announced a $2,000 grant to maxi taxi and taxi drivers, though passenger capacity remains restricted. We'll have more on that later. In the meantime, to ensure that people don't become complacent as phase two is ushered in, the Prime Minister also announced that a new type of police patrol is coming on stream. As of next week, Thursday onward, there will be joint patrols between police officers and district medical officers. In the event that you don't cooperate and there isn't the authority for the police to act under the regular other regulations that govern police action, there most certainly will be the opportunity for the district medical officer to act on the Public Health Act. So between the police and the public health officer, there is enough legislative authority to make you comply. There are more than 100 medical officers currently available for these patrols. And the health minister says that on Monday, they will begin contracting and training more people for this purpose. He says if you are not required to be outside, you're required to stay inside. Additionally, Prime Minister Rowley urged the adoption of a new policy. Very simple. No mask, no service. So if that operator says to you, no mask, no roti, no mask, don't come in here. It means that they have an authority to tell you that. And all I'm asking you to do, let that be your contribution in this war against this virus. The Prime Minister also stated that the frequency of the press meetings will now be reduced to Mondays, Wednesdays and Saturdays, unless there is an urgent and immediate development. Prime Minister Rowley also declined to answer questions over his March meeting with the Venezuelan Vice President. He was at the time addressing his government's reason to grant an exemption to a local businessman to re-enter the country this week. The Prime Minister was then asked about his decision to grant entry to the Venezuelan delegate when the reporter was shut down. Not really, you see that? Today I am not wasting any of my time on that. Today I'm talking to the people of Trinidad and Tobago about their lives and their livelihood and those fabricated scandals is for another time. You know when I come to this podium I spend hours talking to you. Today I'm not raising that. Not because we're afraid of it, but because I just don't want the population to be confused with foolishness. Dr. Rowley then promised that at a later date he would address the issue. The NGO Helping Hands has collaborated with the Ministry of Social Development to assist people who have been affected by the ongoing pandemic and are seeking to be registered for salary relief grants, social relief grants, income assistance and temporary food cards. Nicholas Lechmansing has the details. The non-governmental organization Helping Hands saw the gap in the system and decided to help not only those in need of charitable assistance, but with technical assistance, saying they recognized the need for their service and decided to lend a helping hand. When I realized that a lot of people would have been calling the offices of the ministry. So one of the things that we wanted to do is reduce those number of persons that were crawling in the ministry's office and also assist those persons who does not have Councillor for Makoya, Trin City, Josiah Austin, was also present to help distribute hampers to persons in need, saying this was the third time they were doing so. So we have over 100 people. This is the third leg. We were in Aruka at first, and last week we are in Maloney, and we are going to Bonnet after. 
so it's four legs. This is the third of four. So you know, a lot of people leaving here with, with, with their hands full. You know, we assistant, you know, our uh, member of parliament, she always says she doesn't want anyone to leave with their hands empty. So we're just assisting people as we move along. So look forward to more. Uh, we should be moving to Bonnie next. Nicholas Suchman Singh, TV6 News. A 61-year-old woman is among a number of people arrested by Arima police officers overnight for breaking the public health ordinance regulations. Officers were busy enforcing the COVID-19 restrictions in that area, arresting several people for congregating in groups of more than five. The exercise, which was carried out from 7 p.m. to midnight, saw officers going to Jacob Hill Road, Wallerfield, at around 8.45 p.m., where they noticed a group of men standing in front of a minimart. The men were asked to disperse and they complied, and the owner of the minimart was informed that her business was required to close at 6 p.m. They entered the premises suspecting that she was also selling alcohol without a license, which led to the woman's arrest. A quantity of alcohol was seized. Later, the officers had to shut down a COVID party at Martin Lane Arima, which had a crowd of about 25 people. Then, over in Samro village, closer to midnight, a group of people were observed liming on the roadway consuming alcohol. Since police say they had been warned on previous occasions, five people were then arrested and then taken to the Arima police station. Of course, investigations continue into these arrests. Ahead on the TV6 Weekend News, the health minister looks after the safety of his constituents. Stay with the TV6 News. Paper planes? Yes, please. Paper statements? No thanks. You've probably received paper statements for most of your life. However, soon paper statements will be gone. With electronic statements or e-statements, you can get all the banking information you need 20... Greetings everyone. I hope this message meets you and yours in the best of health as we join in encouraging all to act responsibly. COVID-19 presents the most serious and deadly challenge any of us will experience in our lifetimes. We must act now. We need to keep the Caribbean safe. We can all help to stop the spread of the coronavirus. Please stay at home. So Caribbean people, please stay home. Caribbean people, please stay at home. Please stay home. It's that simple. This too shall pass. But for now, stay home. Stay in a yard. Stay home, stay safe. Long ago, the strength of Grenadians was in their arms as they worked the lands to get food for the table. Nowadays, most Grenadians' plate is packed with lots of starch and meat, little or no vegetables, plenty fried fruits, and they wash that down with something sweet while sitting in front of screen. Hard work and exercise seem to be out of style and lifestyle diseases are becoming the fashion of the day and claiming many lives. Let's make a change to live longer. Let us grow and enjoy a variety of natural and safe, fresh vegetables and fruits every day. Use our local fresh seasoning and spices to make our traditional dishes healthier and avoid highly processed foods, snacks and drinks. Drink more water every day to help your body function better. Get moving every day and trade some screen time to share and enjoy healthy family meals. Choose healthy foods and healthy lifestyle. Follow the healthy choices for healthy living guidelines for Grenadians. told you earlier, come Thursday, more businesses are expected to reopen. The Prime Minister has announced an early introduction of Phase 2 set to take place. He also announced a $2,000 grant to Maxi Taxi and Taxi Drivers, though passenger capacity remains restricted. Here's reporter Cindy Ragobar Tikusing with the latest adjustments. And therefore, I can say to you today that Phase 2 should begin on Thursday. Three days 
days ahead of schedule, this country will see the reoperationalizing of the public and private manufacturing and construction sectors. Initially planned for May 24th, the Prime Minister announced the earlier tentative reintroduction of Phase 2 is based on the fact that our COVID numbers continue to remain unchanged. As of Sunday, this country records its 21st consecutive day without a positive COVID-19 case. We will reopen the manufacturing sector. The entire manufacturing sector will be open from Thursday. And of course, we'll go further and we'll open the construction sector across the board. We will add to activities that are permitted. Um, motor mechanics and tire shops opened up for servicing, laundry and dry cleaning opened up. All other businesses remain unessential at this time. Dr. Rowley says the government recognizes it means a significant increase to population traffic come next week and warned citizens that social distancing is of utmost importance so as not to tempt a relapse from occurring. He says a few countries who begun gradual reopenings recorded a significant spike in positive cases. It's why the 50% passenger capacity across public transport transportation will remain at this stage. However, the state will now provide a special grant to all registered maxi and taxi owners. The Minister of Finance will make a fuel support grant of $1,000 available immediately to support the public transportation efforts of these $2,000, $2,000, not one, two. $2,000. We'll make a fuel support grant of $2,000 for the maxi operators to be able to conduct their business and transport our people. One off payment for the period, covering the period um, now until June, when they, and, and we hope that sometime well before that, well before the end of the month, we could be able to tell them to go back to normal. This initiative, he says, will cost taxpayers approximately $6 million. Cindy Ragubatika saying TV6 News. With a general election imminent, the health minister found time away from handling COVID-19 issues to deal with a constituency matter that could save lives, a pedestrian walkover. Nicholas Lechman Singh has more. Job well done, these were the words from the Minister of Health, not in relation to the handling of the COVID-19 pandemic here in Trinidad and Tobago, but for a walkover in his constituency of St. Joseph. Speaking as body member of parliament for St. Joseph, which is there where I live, and as Minister of Health, this is a very good day for us. It's some good news in all this coronavirus um, matters, and I'm so happy and proud to be here with my colleague and friend, who is also my constituent. We live in the same area and to congratulate the contractor and everyone at NITCO and the Ministry of Works and Transport. Job well done. Minister of Works and Transport Rohan Sinanan, also present for the commissioning of the walkover, said despite the financial challenges faced, the facility came in under budget as part of an infrastructural program started years ago. Despite the financial challenges, the government was able to deliver. And what you're seeing now is you're rolling out of all the projects that we have started over the last four years. It took some time, but we are able to deliver on that. This interchange, I must say, spans 11 lanes. I don't think there's another in this walkover, another walkover that spans 11 lanes. So that is why we are so proud of this. We were able to deliver this within budget and way below the, the time that was allotted for it. Works Minister Rohan Sinanan also reported on another project, the desilting of rivers in preparation for the rainy season. Here, we, our program is just as ambitious. Fortunately for us, we were able to get the funding at the beginning of the dry season. And we, have st we had started the program. We did take a two-week break, but I'm happy to say that we have 42 contractors now throughout Trinidad and Tobago, and the program have restarted, and we will complete the program well before the, the, the height of the rainy season. Rohan Sinanan also referred to several pieces of legislation which were 
were recently passed to ensure greater safety on the nation's roads. Another landmark legislation where we were able to pass in the parliament, again, the spot speed cameras, the uh, disabled parking, that entire um, layer of, of legislation, and also we had the tint legislation being passed. So the Ministry of Works Transport Division, I think this was a great week for us in terms of our accomplishment. Nicholas Suchman saying, TV6 News. On the crime front now, five men are to be charged this weekend with a total of 63 sexual offences committed against minors. According to police, the men whose ages range from 24 to 70 years old are all from central Trinidad. The arrests were made on Friday as part of an anti-crime exercise conducted by officers of the Child Protection Unit and assisted by officers of the Central Division's Operations Unit. Police say the suspects were held for various offences against children, including sexual touching and sexual penetration. The accused are to appear before a Chaguanas magistrate on Monday. And a 53-year-old man has been charged with the murder of his 26-year-old nephew. Joseph Arles, a mechanic of Phase 5 La Hoqueta, was charged on Friday following instructions from DPP Roger Gaspard. According to reports, the victim, Margin Marvin Hoston, was at home in La Hoqueta on Monday when he was stabbed several times about his body. Arles, who was arrested on the same day of the stabbing, is expected to appear before an Arima magistrate on Monday. To come in sport, a new date has been given for the Olympic boxing qualifiers. And stranded footballers get assistance in El Salvador. Sports next, weather later. Now this. Paper. The Grenada Food and Nutrition Council remind you to boost your immune system and give yourself a fighting chance against COVID-19. Consume foods that are rich in vitamin C, like fruits and vegetables, for example, oranges, grapefruit, mandarin, lemon, spinach, cabbage, and tomatoes. Vitamin B6 and folic acid that is found in chicken, turkey, fish, grain foods like oats, bread, local provisions, dry beans and peas. Another immune system booster is vitamin E found in nuts, corn, sunflower or canola oils and leafy vegetables like spinach, broccoli and kale. Iron, zinc and vitamin D are also important to strengthen your immunity. So try foods like lean meats, eggs, lentils, mackerel, tuna and jacks. Our local spices ginger, clove, and turmeric, among others, can help decrease inflammation and support the immune system. Remember to practice safe food handling. A message from the Grenada Food and Nutrition Council reminding you that a strong immune system is one of the best ways to fight COVID-19. The following are a list of food items to have on hand amidst COVID-19. Perishables like vegetables, fruits, provisions, and eggs. You are advised to stock perishable items to last up to two weeks. Non-perishable items including dry goods like cereals, flour, cornmeal, oats, rice, pasta, nuts and nut butters like peanut butter, crackers, canned or frozen meats, ready-to-eat canned meats, powdered or canned milk, dried peas and beans, canned fruits in natural juices, 100% canned fruit juices. Finally relief. You can stock non-perishable food items to last up to one month. Store bottled or... ...city has worked with the El Salvador Football Federation to ensure that Trinidad and Tobago footballers Jamal Williams, Jamal Jack and Jamul Francois are kept safe until they can return to TNT. Managing Director of Unicoma Trinidad Limited, Clive Fletcher, liaised with Unicoma Group CEO Mario Simon to ensure that the players are now housed together and taken care of until TNT's borders are reopened. The players were playing in the El Salvador's Primera Division but were facing increasing pressure to meet their daily demands after the government lockdown and the cancellation of the remainder of the season. 
In a release from the Trinidad and Tobago Football Association, Jack offers his appreciation of all those involved in making the provisions possible. Jack and Francois joined El Salvadorian clubs Okoro FC and Independiente FC San Vicente, respectively, in January 2020. In March 2020, the government of El Salvador declared a national quarantine in the fight against COVID-19, which has directly limited the footballers' movements. Good news for boxers in Trinidad and Tobago. A new date has been given by the International Olympic Committee for the rescheduled Olympic boxing qualifiers. The America's Olympic qualifiers event is scheduled to take place between February and March of 2021 at a location yet to be announced. The IOC stated that the exact date and location will be provided at least three months before the event. The date, nonetheless, will give the respective local boxers a time frame with which to work and get prepared. The IOC has also given the new criteria for qualification. It stated in a release that athletes who did not earn a quota place in their Continental Olympic qualifier may be registered to participate in the final World Cup World Olympic qualifier in which their NOC has not already earned and accepted a quota place. It gives room for boxers such as Michael Alexander, Tiana Guy, Nigel Paul, Aaron Prince, and even Joel Lambert an opportunity for a final attempt at qualification. Well, 2021 could be the year that Trinidad and Tobago gets its first boxing medal at the Olympics. That's the belief of boxer Aaron Prince, who says it's on his bucket list as he attempts to go where no local boxer has gone before. The veteran believes accomplishing the feat will help silence his critics who have questioned why he hasn't turned pro. Before even thinking of getting a medal, 34-year-old boxer Aaron Prince will be aiming to ensure his name is written as having gotten through the Olympic boxing qualifiers, which was postponed as a result of COVID-19. Prince felt he had a strong chance of qualifying had the event gone ahead as planned in 2020 based on his performances. I'm a little troubled that the COVID-19 came on and stopped the whole thing because I felt like I would have had a very good performance and I, I would have achieved qualifying at the Olympics. And it's not a medal at the Olympics, but first there is a qualification. I felt it, I, I, I knew it. He praised the homegrown coaching staff for their ability to help him recover from injury and to see him become national and Caribbean champion. And he's also confident that they will help him to peak at the right time for the rescheduled boxing qualifiers. I believe in the coaches and the ability to train us and get us there, you know, because, you know, we have been achieving our performances under the, our coaches, our local coaches, you know, so I have no doubt that we will peak at the right time and we will achieve good performances coming along at the um, Olympic qualifiers. If Prince does qualify, he will join boxers Nigel Paul, Carlos Suarez and Kurt Sinet, who also qualified for an Olympics. However, if he medals, he will be the only person to accomplish the feat for TNT. It's an achievement that is on the bucket list for the fighter who has chosen to remain amateur for what he says is the lack of opportunities present for professional fighters. Professional boxing in Trinidad Tobago is feeding. It's almost dead, almost non-existent. And people in the professional ranks, the officials, the powers that be, I am not sure what they are doing to lift the standard or to even revise it, you know, so why would I leave to go into that system? I mean, I'm not seeing anything in that for me. As of now, Prince remains the man to beat. However, he says he's open to competing against anyone thinking they can take the title of national champion. Sergio Dufour, TV6 Sport. Erling Haaland scored uh, for Borussia Dortmund as they mark the return of the Bundesliga during the coronavirus outbreak with a convincing 4-0 win over Schlager. It was the most one-sided encounter on a day which featured six matches. The game will mostly be remembered for the surreal circumstances in which it was played as Germany became the first major league in Europe to resume action behind closed doors.
Not a soul in the stands, but every shout by players or coaches could be heard at Dortmund's iconic Signal Iduna Park Stadium. Social distancing protocol was followed by substitutes and during goal celebrations. Erling Haaland opened the scoring with a trademark cool finish, flicking home across to continue his sensational season, albeit an enforced break of almost 10 weeks. Rafael Guerrero added two more goals. That's his first in the 45th. Hazard also found the net. He gave it a good whack in the 48. Guerrero would get his second and his team's fourth as Dortmund went on to claim a comfortable win over their near neighbours and move within a point of leaders Bayern Munich, who play on Sunday. Sergio Dufour, TV6 Sport. Hey, let's check in on the weather next. Enjoy family time and curb those cravings with Burger King's family meals. things you need to know about self-isolation. Stay home. If you are told to self-isolate, it means staying at home, not going to work, school, or other public places, and you should not have any visitors. Separate yourself. If you live with others, then you need to stay in a well-ventilated bedroom with the door shut. If you have to share a bathroom, then use it after everyone else. Don't share towels and toiletries, as this may put others at risk. Call ahead. If you develop symptoms such as a fever or cough, then seek advice first by calling the Ministry of Health hotline at 538-4787 or 458-4787. Please do not show up at a medical center or hospital, as this may put others at risk. Take care with waste. If you test positive, your waste should be double bagged and disposed of separately. Create a buddy system. If you live on your own, you can plan with friends and family to check in with each other and run essential errands if one becomes sick. Once sick, they should leave groceries on the doorstep. Why it's important. COVID-19 causes a mild illness for four out of five persons. Self-isolating will help protect the older generation and those who may have underlying health problems from getting infected. As you panic by amidst COVID-19, keep proper food storage tips in mind. Check expiration dates when shopping and place new items at the back of the cupboard and older ones in front so you'll use the older items first. Keep dry food in a dry, cool, dark area and always keep your food covered. Pick up frozen items last when shopping and store first when you get home. Empty opened packages of sugar, dried fruits and and nuts into screw top jars or airtight cans to protect them from pests and losing freshness. Clean the top of store. It's been so hot off late. When will it rain? Well, the Met Office says tonight conditions are mostly fair with a light breeze and the odd shower. Tomorrow, predominantly hot, hazy, and breezy with the low chance of a brisk afternoon shower. The forecast maximum temperatures for tomorrow are expected to be 34 degrees Celsius in Trinidad and 32 degrees Celsius in Tobago. For marine interests, seas are expected to be moderate, with waves up to 2 meters in open waters and below 1 meter in sheltered areas. The economic fallout of COVID-19 is being felt in Jamaica. The RJR Gleaner Communications Group has laid off 93 workers and implemented salary cuts for others. The management says it has become necessary to implement a range of internal measures to reduce expenses. It says while the entire group has been negatively impacted, the print operations have been seriously affected both locally and overseas. In Barbados, there's word that the secondary school's entrance examination, a common entrance exam, has now been rescheduled to July 14, 2020. The exam was originally scheduled for May 5th, but was postponed because of COVID-19. 
If that's the way it was, I'm Dominic Califizad. On behalf of Team 6, good night and remember, stay home, stay safe.